Welcome to another Liquid Bullet Productions. With us today is Miss Julie Major. Hi, Thanks yeah. for coming, Julie. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk about the Mark Osborne miscarriage of justice case. Yes. Can you just, uh, just to start off with, can you just tell us how you sort of come involved in this case? Oh, well, I've known Mark and his family quite a long time. Um, and it, a petition went out, there's a petition online, like a free Mark Osborne petition. And I went to see it and I ended up speaking to, to Mark's mum. And then Mark uh, got contacted me from the prison. And I just sort of started looking into the paperwork and what had gone on in the case. And it was, it was obvious it was a miscarriage of justice. And I've got quite, quite an interest in uh, law. I've just started a law degree online. So um, I just sort of got involved and just thought I'd try and help Mark any way I can, could. So, so how sort of long have you known Mark from like a child or? Yes, um, since, I, yeah, oh God, yeah, years. 30 odd years, his family, I've known over yeah. 30 years I've known his family. So could you just tell us a little bit about his background? For the uh, yeah, he's, um, he, he grew up with his, his mum, his mum and dad got divorced, so he grew up with his mum mainly. At one stage, his, him and his brother went separate ways, the, the brother went with the dad, yeah. and he stayed with the mum. Um, a little bit of a character, a cheeky character, biggest art you'll ever, you'll, really big art, really close to his mum's special relationship. Was a little bit of a, a wild one because he tended to defend his mates. If his mates have a little bit of trouble, he'd go in and help them out. So a little bit of trouble. He lost his friend um, in a tragic accident, which really sort of upset him a little bit before this incident. Um, so he went on a bit of a wild one, a bit of fighting, and he was actually in prison for fighting when this crime took place. Right. So, so can you tell us a little bit like, about the crime that's the miscarriage of justice? Yes, what it is, um, uh, the victim... Um, allegedly worked for um, Mark's brother and he uh, selling drugs right. and he got into debt. It is, this, this is what the court case says, he got into debt um, and, you know, they, they supposedly shot him over it. They lured him to a site and uh, shot him. It was a, a stem machine gun. We don't, you know, some say it was not meant to murder, it was meant to frighten. But... Um, yeah, so the, unfortunately the victim died. He was shot in front of his uh, girlfriend and baby boy. Um, as I say, Mark was in, in jail at the time. Um, and the reason Mark got pulled into this was because his cellmate um, allegedly heard a phone call from the alleged shooter saying, I've stuck 10 in him, which then uh, apparently that makes Mark guilty of being involved. So what is, um, can I just ask about the, the cellmates? Obviously Mark was in prison for a different crime. Yes. And then he's been pinpointed for this murder. Yes. It's so while he's in prison. Yes. Yeah? Yes, so his cellmate, his cellmate had um, 13 aliases, nine different dates of birth, a long uh, string of convictions, violent convictions, including guns and things like that. And as I say, he was facing deportation at the time. I have the paperwork to prove it. Um, he'd got a letter, I think back in the February, this happened in the June, saying that they was looking to deport him because of his violence back to Somalia. So he was really alarmed about that. Um, and it, he got another letter in the May, I think it was. Bear in mind, the, this crime took place at the 1st of June. Um, and he said that he, he wanted to speak to a police officer, a uh, prison officer because he believed he knew somebody that knew somebody that had murdered somebody. His cellmate knew somebody had murdered somebody. That was all he said. He didn't say he was involved. And uh, the, his first original statement, he said that he heard Mark on his phone to his brother trying to arrange the murder and, uh, and offering £10,000. OK? When the, when the police come down a week later and it was discovered there was no phone logs to corroborate this, yeah. That totally got dropped by the victim, by the witness, and by the police. So it, they never even asked him, "Why did you lie in the beginning?" He never ever mentioned that side of it again because there was no, no, nothing to corroborate it. It didn't happen. Um, so he then changed it to saying he'd heard and uh, stuck ten in him. That was all he heard. Um, the prosecution interviewed Mark and refused to charge him. He said, "Was it enough evidence? Nothing to go on." This went on for six months. The police kept trying, trying, trying. And even though no new evidence come forth, they ended up charging Mark with murder under the Joint Enterprise Scheme, along with the other two. And this was mainly based um, because Mark spoke to the alleged shooter the night before the shooting at 10 o'clock at night. But bear in mind, the alleged shooter was his friend. Bear in mind, you know, the other co-defendant's his brother. 
But we have since found out, and I have again the paperwork to prove it, call logs, etc., that the, his brother and the that his brother the night before at five o'clock tried to lure um, the victim to the murder scene the night before. He actually there's there's um, phone logs putting him in the spot. Then there's phone logs of him calling the alleged shooter. The alleged shooter was someone else, where somewhere else. The call logs then show the alleged shooter moving on to the site where the, the murder was supposed to take place. They then phoned the victim um, and he couldn't come. He was out on a, a, a family meal. There's a statement from his girlfriend that says that. And I think there is a statement from uh, Tony himself saying that they arranged to meet at some point. Didn't say at the murder scene, just said at some point and he couldn't make it. So there's quite a lot of evidence there to... And if that's the case, if that is what happened, if they had got him there the night before, obviously they weren't getting there to, to have a cup of tea, there is no phone contact between Mark and the co-defendants. So there's no way on earth that Mark could have arranged this. Yeah, it, especially being inside, it's going to be a lot harder to um, be involved you know, than being on the outside, isn't it? Exactly. It doesn't really make sense. Well, this is, the, this is the other thing I stated because, you know, if his if he's, uh, cellmate allegedly heard this phone conversation, because, you know, in a cell, you're like this next yeah. to each other, there's nowhere to go. So um, if Mark had arranged it, his cellmate surely would have heard him arrange it. So surely, you know, if his cellmate didn't speak up, one, that makes him a bit of, a bit of an accessory because he kept quiet and let it occur, or two, it didn't happen. And the cellmate has never, ever, ever said, apart from that first thing, he, when he, that claim he made and then the phone calls didn't back it up, he has never said he heard Mark arrange it. And there is no way on this planet Mark could have arranged it without his cellmate knowing. So, so did you think this could be like a conversation between Mark and his cellmate, Mark telling him of what's happened or whatever, yeah. sort of, um, you know, from a phone call, someone's been shot, and then mm. the, his cellmate's made this alleged story up to benefit yourself, basically. Definitely, definitely, yeah. because the police got involved with um, the witness's um, deportation and got it stopped. So that got right. stopped. Yes, we've even got letters to prove it from the police asking them to stop the um, deportation, um, and they actually stopped it. Um, and also, um, I've lost what I was saying, but so, yeah. So he's the, the guy is basically trying to stop yourself getting deported. Exactly. Yes, the sounds of it. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, and as I said to you, there, there wasn't. There, there, he, there's no way Mark. He could not have heard Mark do anything else because you know, had Mark arranged it, he would have heard it. And I'm sure if he's, you know, according to him, he come forward because he felt sorry for the victim. Yeah. So surely he would have prevented that happening to the victim then, because they all knew the they all knew the victim, the cellmate on the outside knew everybody involved as well yeah. and it also um, before he spoke to the police the newspapers came into the jail they read in the newspapers what had happened to the victim and obviously there was phone calls going back and forth mark knew the victim was friends so, with the so victim. before the uh, the cellmate gave this evidence against mark it was already like common knowledge it was in the papers it was it was out there about the murder yes yeah. yes, so it, yes it wasn't come no, you know, like no, a new information no, then. No, And as I said to you, they, for some reason in court, they barked on about this tent, stuck ten in him, stuck ten in him. Um, and they, as I said to you, there was only six bullets yeah. and one stray. So, this, and so, so they were saying, how did the witness know about the ten? If it, but there wasn't ten, so he didn't know about the ten. He, he's only what he heard here say. Yeah. So it all seems to be based, it's, it's just so loosely... Base. There's no real evidence against Mark. Yeah, it, it seems like he's, they're just going on like a say of a, a grass, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, uh, the, the witness also gave um, his uh, evidence in the witness box and was in jail under one of his aliases and under, under one of his alias dates of birth. He wasn't in under the genuine ones. And the police were aware of this because uh, I'll call him DCD. He was involved in the case, Detective Constable, and he made a statement halfway through the investigation stating that the witness, and he gave him give his real name and his real date of birth, was on a uh, public protection um, sentence, and that's why he hadn't been released yet. I don't know why this statement came in, but he called him by his real name and stated his real date of birth, so I don't know why they allowed him to go to court and give name uh, it wasn't for witness protection, yeah. because obviously he was already in jail under that fake name anyway. 
So I don't know why he was being allowed to use the false names, etc., false dates of birth. I don't. Mm. It seems strange as well that, like, um, if he's up for deportation, that they they stop it because he's gave this evidence. Yeah. Like, you know, if he's a bad character and he's been in prison for all crimes himself, and mm. surely he's uh, doesn't make witness. him suddenly a nice person and keep him in the country. Exactly. Does it? Exactly, and, and if, if, if you know, if Mark had tried to use the the, the, the witness in his defence, if he'd been on the outside, for example, and he'd been with that witness, and that that, that crime had took place, they would never have let Mark use him. They'd have said he's an unreliable witness; yeah. he can't be used. And yet, it was okay for them to use him to convict a man for thirty years. Mark's got thirty years minimum. He's done thirteen at the moment. He was twenty six when he went away. His 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 nan's got dementia, so she'll never know his name. His granddad's eighty something. Um, he's just he's totally lost it. He's lost. He's totally lost his life, really. Yeah. Um, uh, have you spoke to Mark since this uh, has happened? In I speak, contact with him. I speak to him all the time. Yes. I mean, we made a recording of, of how the uh, crime had affected him actually, and and he says in there, you know. He, he would love to have children, he's lost, you know, um, and it's just took his hope away. I mean, he's just sort of getting his hope back now because where we're working together a bit, yeah. he's sort of, he's given him a little bit of Like a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, so he's sort of what started to work out again, you know, yeah. he's got a couple of jobs in the jail. He's, he's doing actually, he's going education. So he's trying to sort of, he's trying to turn his life around as well. Um, he, he, and as I said to you, if you knew him, he's got the biggest heart. Mm. going and I'm not saying that because he's my friend he genuinely has got a really that, big that heart that must be really hard to deal with because I mean to do that sort of amount of time for something you did commit mm. you know you have to put your hands up and accept it but for something you haven't done and you've mm. got to sit that time that's, that must be mentally draining it must uh, yeah. you know a lot of people some people can't handle it can they and they mm. commit suicide and stuff so he does suffer with anxiety now and yeah. he, has, he is on medication for anxiety um, and depression um, and he does have his days when yeah. he's not in a good place, you know, because, you know, it's, it's, it's soul-destroying. Yeah, definitely. You know, he's lost everything, and it, to be innocent, like you say, to be innocent yeah. is just soul-destroying. It's crazy. Mm. Crazy. So what, what, are, what are the plans going forward with this so case now? At the moment, we're looking to take this, the, the, the evidence I just said to you about the prior meeting. Um, we're hoping to take that to the CCRC, which I, I suppose you know is a Criminal yeah. Cases Review Commission. But as you know, that the, um, the bar for their substantiative test is so high, you know, I have to prove your innocence to get past them. So it's a really, really difficult thing to do. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping we can get past them. Um, we've also got some uh, applied to uh, CPS, etc., for some um, disclosure stuff. So we're looking just in case there's anything else. Because, as I say, there's so much wrong with this. It's just finding the right evidence to prove it. Yeah. And um, there's too much wrong with it to not be able to find yeah. stuff. But um, the more the more we've been doing these sort of interviews and cases with people, we just stumbled across so many of these miscarriages of justice. Yeah. Now, uh, mm. it, it's just one after the other after the other just start to think you know, I know. Are, are the police were all corrupt that's what it seems to be yeah, like exactly like, I, do you know it's, i mean i work in the nhs and i've been telling my work colleagues um what's been going on with, um, with mark and they're really stunned by it they said we didn't yeah. realize things like that went on you know justice is yeah. justice i mean like some of the big cases like the essex boys still under review yes. the um stuart the michael barrymore one stuart yes. Lovell, is it? yeah, yeah Lovelock, the, isn't it? Lovelock, yeah Lovelock, mm. yeah there's um there's been so many so many yes yes even the even the uh, M twenty five three Raphael Rowe and yep, they got out right. yeah there's, it, it goes on and on and on yeah. so um, there's a few other avenues we're looking down but at the moment obviously I don't really want to mention them because until you sort of get things signed and sealed you know you yeah. don't want to um, but this 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 with the meeting the day before looks really really promising because there's evidence to back it up there's phone logs. And everything so um, and we as I say we actually have a statement from somebody saying that, that it was supposed to take place the night before so that's quite promising but as I said you know you never know with a CCRC you're up against a bit of an impossibility with him yeah so what sort of um, what evidence have you got to remove Mark's element from that pardon me well, because um, as I said yeah the main evidence to say Mark arranged this is his cellmate saying he heard something, and Mark evidently ringing the alleged shooter at 10 o'clock the night before the shooting, and he was on the phone for 7 minutes and 50 seconds, I think it was. So they're saying in that time he arranged the murder. Well, if it took place 
the day before at five o'clock. This is when they tried to get him there. There is no phone calls between Mark and the alleged shooter or Mark and his brother to, for Mark to have been able to arrange it. It totally takes Mark, totally yeah. one million percent out of the picture. There's one phone call that Mark tried to make to the alleged shooter um, on the 28th of May or 26th of May. Goes to answer machine. It's a one second call. No message was left. So, and there's a, me a phone call from his brother. It's his brother at the end of the day. That was about the 28th of May. But again, that went to answer machine. Mark picked the answer machine call up. Obviously, if that answer machine had anything interesting in it or anything to incriminate anybody, that would have been used in the course, trial. Yeah. So obviously, that was an innocent um, thingy. So there's quite a lot, really. It takes Mark totally out of the picture, really. Yeah. So it is quite a big thing, really. Um, yeah. It's just whether they listen. Yeah, it just seems a bit, you know, a bit strange that they're just taking that cell, the, uh, the cellmate's word for it, mm. wasn't it? Yeah, I think what it was as well, it Mark... It just looks like they're just trying to pinpoint someone for it. Yeah, what it was as well, Mark and, Mark and the victim had been friends for years and they had like, you know, you know how people speak to each other, yeah. sometimes I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kick... Keep, you know, like you do sometimes, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I've done it myself, I've messaged my friends and there was little messages, I mean, I think they used a message from back in December before the victim was shot um, and Mark had messaged him saying something like, oh, I'm going to kill you because he'd had the ump with him and even the girlfriend said that was their relationship, they was yeah. really good friends, there was no bad feeling, it was just now and again they'd get annoyed with each other and they'd text... Yeah, so yeah. They, even the girlfriend said that. I've also got police intelligence quite a bit that totally, because they said, tried to say Mark dealt drugs with his brother as well. Right. Okay. But the, the police intelligence, I've got it in the paperwork there, um, states they couldn't find any connection between Mark dealing drugs. Tony, yes. Mark, no. No connection whatsoever. And that's police intelligence. There's quite a lot of police intelligence. And there's nothing that implicates Mark in dealing drugs or... So what was the, the, was there a reason behind of the shooting? It was a... Drug step. It was drug, drug step. step, yes. So once again, that eliminates Mark from it if he yes. was involved in yes. the drug side yes. of it. Yes, I mean, even the, even the victim's girlfriend said that um, he didn't work for Mark. He only works for the brother. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I'm saying. And she also made a statement that she, when the, evidently when the shooter put um, the balaclava on in the court case, she suddenly raised a point of, I don't think the shooter was white because she could see the whites of the shooter's eyes yeah, and she couldn't see that at the time. And she made a statement to the CCRC um, saying that she believed, and because she got a couple of things wrong, they said she wasn't a reliable witness. And yet at that same time that she made a statement about that, DCD, again, he made a statement to the CCRC and got all the main facts of the case totally wrong. And he was classed as reliable, and he's a policeman that should be remembering. And he tried to say that, that, that the evidence was they'd stuck six in him, which was wrong. And he mentioned some amounts of money, which was wrong. And he also made a statement in that statement saying he don't believe they meant to kill him, they meant to hurt, uh, frighten him. And yet he was, he's, he's was allowed to be accepted, and hers was classed as unreliable. Strange, isn't it? Very. It's very, very strange. I just think... I think they lumped Mark. I think they lumped Mark in. I think what they'd done. I think they was worried they wouldn't get Tony. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say the other names. The other two. Mm -hmm. So they brought Mark into it, thinking that if Mark looked like he was going to go down in panic and speak if he knew anything. Yeah. But Mark didn't know anything to speak. So Mark really, and it just. I don't know how he got convicted on the say so of that witness to this day. I mean, the witness actually got thrown off of the. Um, Justice Protection Scheme, um, because he went to a hotel, smashed it up, ran up to a load at Big Bill. He got uh, arrested for assault while he was... Oh, really? Yes. So he was just... He also shaved his head during the... During the um, thing. He was very erratic with query mental health issues. He shaved his head. He withdrew his statements several times. I've got one written statement here where he states that the police tricked him into making a statement against Mark. Um, he... Uh, he also lied in the court, which is proven. That, that could actually have some truth in that, couldn't it? With uh, the police tricked him into yes, yes. Uh, offering him something, and yes. so he does a statement. And yes, then, well, uh, he, well, he was so frightened of deportation. Yeah. And there's one stage he tries to withdraw his statement. Again, I wouldn't mention any of this if I didn't have paperwork to back this up. Um, he tried to withdraw his statement, and one of the officers went to see him. And all he says, this officer said, is, I mentioned to the witness that um, if he wasn't going to help us, he may get sent here. And the witness said, well, the only thing worse you can do to me than that is kill me. 
So I don't know what they was trying to threaten him with, or it was the immigration detention centre that he was yeah. panicking about. Because obviously you can stay in there till they move you out of the country. I don't know. That can't. That's supposition. But um, but as I said, yeah, in the courtroom as well, he actually made an allegation against Mark that Mark had said to him, "You're a dead man walking." And they called the cell officers up, and the cell officers said they arrived at different times. They was kept in different sides of the cells. There is no way they could have met, so it was proven a lie in the court. Yeah. The court accepted it was a total lie from the witness. So he even so lied. If they'd been proven a liar in court, then surely how does the rest of his, like what he said, stand up? Exactly. Like you said, the other, the other witnesses were removed because they said they weren't reliable. Yes. Yet this guy... Is there only a bit of evidence and yeah. just as proven he's so, exactly. not reliable. Exactly. We don't understand it to this day. You know, we don't understand that to this day. I don't, and I don't, you know, not knocking the jury, but what the hell, I don't know how they even, you know, the man was pr a proven liar. He, he, as I say, was even in, in under a different name and date of birth in the witness box. So surely that makes that surely legal somewhere along the way. I don't know, but... I just think the whole, the whole. I don't, I don't know, I don't know any of it happened to be truthful. Yeah. I mean, I think Mark never got a fair trial. He was up against two co-defendants who were both giving cutthroat defences, and I don't know if you know what cutthroat defence is, but if it's cutthroat defence, like they can throw, like say for example, Mark had got up. If he'd, Mark had been arrested for saying but never not found guilty, prosecution can't mention it. Yeah. A cutthroat team can they can bring up anything Mark got in trouble with in the time even if he never got charged for it oh, from so the previous could, past, yeah so might, they could have yeah. pulled him totally to pieces his character yeah. so he couldn't really get in the witness box he was advised not to get in the witness box so he couldn't even give his own Evidence, version yeah. as, so to me he didn't really even have a fair trial here you know because um against two cut for it really I think you know maybe it should have been tried to be separated like you can get cut off and because it's just you know I don't think he ever he had a chance no. Really? So when that when he was in there for his original crime, the fighting one, mm. how much of that sentence would he have had left if he didn't get charged with that one? Uh, probably about a year, I think. So I think so, it was two and a half oh, years oh, his sentence. Um, so probably about a year. But um, as I said to you, a lot, a lot, a lot of marks fighting then. Um, I mean, I know what happened with that crime. He went out somewhere and there was some trouble. People started on him. Yeah. You know, and as I said to you, he'd not long lost a friend. Like really, he was like a brother to him. Um, and that that really, you know, broke his heart. That is, he's, you know, still today affects him badly. Yeah. So, um, so he was just on a little bit of a, a wild one. He wasn't a bad person. He wasn't a violent. But yeah. I mean, in the papers they called him a gang leader, a drugs baron. Mark, that wasn't Mark at all. Not not even in the slightest. I mean, a week before his appeal was due up in the appeal court, someone made a malicious phone call to the jail and said that. Um, Mark and the shooter had a, had arranged an helicopter to, for an escape attempt, which is absolutely oh, really? out of this world <laughs> ridiculous. I'm trying to get it removed at the moment, but we, we have to prove that's untrue. I know that has happened a couple of times well, over the years, but I, yeah, I don't do you know think now, now no. they're pretty on top of all no. stuff like nowadays. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and Mark's, when, when they went, obviously went into the bank records when they got arrested. Mark had £30, £30 I think, or in the bank. He never had no assets, he never had no possessions. I mean, his brother his brother did, his brother owned properties, had, had a business, blah, 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 blah. But Mark had absolutely nothing, you know, and if you're this big drugs baron gang leader, he didn't even have an address yeah. when he went into prison, you yeah. know, he didn't have a, uh, no fixed abode. You know what I'm saying? He weren't rolling, he weren't no, no he weren't no, uh, and as I say, if you met Mark, you'd know. He's such a nice person, you'd take to him instantly. You'd know he's just not, you know, that's not him at yeah. all. Like you say as well, even, even that, like uh, you know, drug dealers, flash cars, money. You know, exactly. if, he, if he's got nothing, it pretty much yeah, shows you exactly. he's not, he not earning money yeah. in that business, doesn't it? No, that's right. Yeah. That's what I mean, bank accounts prove. And then, you know, some people say you don't put it in your own bank account, but he still would have had like a property yeah, or a car. Yeah, nice clothes. Yeah, yeah he yeah. had nothing, nothing yeah. at all. So, you know, he weren't living the high life in any way, shape or form. Yeah. So what um what sort of contact have you had with him recently? I speak to him most days. Oh, most days, yeah. Prison phone, he phones me, yeah. yeah. So I speak to him most days, yeah, obviously because of the, 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 you know, working together. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm constantly on it, 24-7 paperwork, going through paperwork. And, yeah. 
Yeah, and just trying to find a way because, it, as I say, it's just, I think it's criminal. It, it, it upsets me because, as I say, even uh, like if I'm having a bad day and even like, you're having a bad day, you know, you're right, June, I'm having a bad day. And he cheers me up. Yeah. And yet his life must be so you, hard in there. You'd have to think when you're like, if you're having a bad day, yeah. it's nothing compared to what no, his days, you know. But he will, make, he will go out of his way to make me feel better. Yeah. You know, and he always brings his mum and he cares about, you know, tries to look after his mum, worries about his mum and his nan and his granddad. And yeah. so, so what prison is he currently serving his sentence in? Dovegate. Dovegate, where's that one? Staffordshire. Oh, Staffordshire. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I wrote to David Lammy, the Minister of Justice, uh, Shadow Minister of Justice, he's actually given Mark a um, case number and he's keeping an eye on the case, but he can't physically get involved because um, Mark's not in his constituency. So he advised me to contact Mark's local MP, who totally sidestepped it and didn't want to get involved at all. Yeah. But, you know, David uh, David Lemmy has given us a, you know, a, a case number, which sort of helps. Um, so... But, you know, under the joint enterprise thing as well, so he was convicted in 2016, uh, in 2009, and the joint enterprise law changed in 2016. I don't know right. if you're aware. Oh, no. Um, yes, because in 2009, when Mark was convicted, all you had to prove was foreseeability, that Mark could have foreseen that someone was going to go, you know, and shoot someone, blah, blah, blah. And you could be found guilty, so the evidential bar was down there. Right. In 2016, they said the law had been wrongly interpreted. And they now, you now have to prove that, uh, you know, a doubt. You have to prove that they sort of, proof, burden of proof yeah. now. So uh, I don't think it would have much impact on Mark's case in one sense because he's accused of arranging it. So, but it would have done in one another sense because he probably wouldn't have been dragged into it. Had, it, yeah. had the trial happened today, when they initially dragged him into it, they probably couldn't have done under the, the way the law changed. But, yeah. Hmm. It, it seems... Obviously, obviously, the guy, the shooter, he's obviously been convicted for yes. murder, yeah? Yeah. That just seems strange that they've got the guy that's done it, yet they've charged someone else yeah. for it. Yeah. Well, as I said to you, there's, there's quite a lot of this. there is quite a lot of evidence against the other two. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you and say there ain't. There is. And none of the family, as I said to you, Mark's brother is one of the defendants. Yeah. Nobody's fighting for Mark's brother, and that's not to be horrible. That's just because, you know... But Mark is innocent, so that's why we're fighting for Mark. Um, we have a free Mark Osborne official uh, Facebook page. We have an Instagram one. We're also in the in the process of starting up a website. Yeah. We've just got to get a video together with the paperwork. Other than that, it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, we've got he's got a petition that's online, a free Mark Osborne petition. So we, we, we you know we just we're trying everything we can. We went on a march with Jing Jingba. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're just like a joint enterprise. Not a like a protest type thing yeah. done, yeah? Yeah, we did where, that. Where was that held? Uh, we went, that was in London. We went to the uh, Houses of Parliament. We went to the Supreme Court yeah. outside there and they had a little bit of a chant and a little bit of a, you know, so... Probably to um, get awareness, basically. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, they, they, a lot, so the, the joint enterprise, unfortunately, has been used to convict a lot of people just for, you know... Being, being around like a fight took place, someone's died and because they happen to be standing in that area, they've gone down for murder. And Manchester has just built a mahusive cult so that the dock holds up to 12 to 14 people uh -huh. so they can do more joint enterprise. And unfortunately, it has been proven that joint enterprise is being used a lot to convict like the minority groups, young minority groups. It's happening, the incidence is higher there. So Jenga's, Jen, Jenga is one of the people that actually got the law changed. Yeah. Help towards change it on the famous Jogi case, and they're now um, campaigning for the CCRC to lower their substantiative test to make it a little bit easier for joint enterprise etc. to appeal their cases. Yeah. So did you say you've already put an appeal into CCRC? No, we're going to do that do this that. week because we've only just sort of discovered this prior meeting that should have took place and the calls to back it up and stuff. We've only sort of found that out in the last week or two. Yeah. So we're quite excited about that because yeah. that, that could that could have big implications. Yeah. I think they take quite a long time to review that they stuff do. though, don't they? They do. Unfortunately they do. I think it can take up to 18 months, especially yeah. with COVID. I, I think we had, we had the TMI team on with the Essex Boys case. I think it was, I think they said, was it three years, Roy? Three years, yeah. Three yeah. years of still waiting for our uh, so you'll be lucky if it's 18 months, but three yeah. years is, is too long, I think. It's just yeah. too, you've been forgetting more than a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, um, the um, 
Human Rights Court, because under Section 16, you're entitled to the right, you know, the fair trial. We don't believe Mark really had a fair trial because of yeah. all the things that went on. But to take it to the Human Rights Court is six years. <laughs> so you know, that's and, and in all that time, that's your life exactly. dwindling away. Six, six yeah. years is a is a long time. You know, so I mean, so. well, Mark's nearly forty now. He that's was twenty six I mean. when he went in there. So he's lost out on a lot of the normal. Yeah, normal life. Yeah, it's the best years of your life, isn't it? Them exactly. Sort of years. Exactly, and I think he probably never, if he ever gets out, he never, um, never be the same person. No. But he does want to help other people if he ever gets out and, and help yeah. kids that get injured. You know, that's his, that's his, he's trying to become a bit of a mentor in the jail. That's what he's hoping to do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as I said to you, he suffers from anxiety, social anxiety. He finds it really difficult to talk to people. Um, he finds it hard to trust anybody. Yes, I suppose you would. Yeah. Really and I would expect him to try and break out if he's free. Do you, do, you know, do you know what? I, 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 do you know, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think he'd, he would like to get. He'd like, you know, because we even thought of maybe asking for a pardon. In, but someone said you have to plead guilty. You have to say you're guilty to get a pardon. Oh, really? I mean, if you're innocent, you're innocent. But like, you know, they make it look like you're going to be guilty. Yeah. Just to get it, yeah. Know, right. I mean, yeah. you know, I just think there's someone's got. Someone out there has got to be able to help Mark here yeah. because there's so. As I say, there's so much wrong with this case. It's too wrong to to not be overturned in some way, some, it's just finding that one thing and finding the right people to listen and, and just, you know, and put in, like this, like what we've got to put across now to the CCRC, it's really vitally, we're going to put it across ourselves. Yeah. And it's really vitally important how you got to put that across because if you put it across wrong, then you're not even going to get heard and it's just like, and even if they do hear it, they're very much poo-poo everything. So we already sort of highlighted half a complaint against the CCRC because Mark had a previous review and they missed some stuff. And it took me a whole day to find out who governed the CCRC. And it turns out it's the parliamentary in-house ombudsman who I spoke to, who now have minor names, minor marks names. So they said if I wanted to raise a complaint at the CCRC, I couldn't. If they didn't respond enough, they would then step in right. and look into that as well. But um, So that is another avenue to, to you know, a complaint that we need to make. But we don't want to aggravate them at the same time. If we've got, yeah, of course. Yeah. If we've got a reply to them. Have, have you been spoke to the papers or anything like that about it? <laughs> no, because the, because the papers put so much against Mark, bad. Yeah. I've tried to go to them and I've, I've tried to get it removed. I'm dealing with uh, the Star at the moment because they, <laughs> they they run the helicopter story. And they said to oh, me... Oh, it's actually went into the paper? Yes, uh, yes, oh, it's actually really? online. If anyone... Because if, if anyone... You know, this is a trouble. Just if anyone tell reviews, us, talk us through that bit. Well, what happened was it? Yeah, week before the um, court case, there's a big story. I could even show it to you on my phone afterwards. But um, there was a big uh, thing in the papers: uh, drugs baron, gang leader, and his accomplice, hired killer, try to uh, have a foiled helicopter, have a helicopter escape foiled. And they said they was in uh, Gartree Prison at the time. And they said that they'd, they'd foiled this plot, and they was in these visible, high visible suits. You know, the escape yeah. suits. And they was getting moved prisons and it was, you know, there was dangerous men and they was going to escape and all that. It was ridiculous. And the prison put Mark in the, in the on the, uh, they called it the E-list, which is the escape thing, for a week while they investigated it. They then come back to Mark and they said, malicious phone call. No, no, never so that found was out just someone it. phoned up and just yes. said that and uh, the papers printed it. Yes, yes. And I've tried to get it removed and I'm dealing with them at the moment and they said I've got to prove it. So I... I um, wrote to the prison uh, people and got a subject access request and I got all the Gartry records and there is nothing on there that states that Mark tried to escape in a helicopter there's a fold escape but I can't I can't really show those that paperwork to the papers without breaching Mark's confidentiality gotcha yeah so it's really awkward for me to prove to the newspaper yeah without breaching Mark's confidentiality so I'm not I'm trying to find a way around it where I can Prove it to them, and then without breaching all the all of Mark's other records, because it's yeah. all on one big. It's sheet. amazing how they are allowed to print stuff like that. That's totally exactly, exactly. You know. I went to Ipso. I think it's Ipso. I think it's called that regulate the newspapers, and they said because it was like it's thirteen years old, it's too old for them to get involved in it. So again, your hands are just tied left, right, and centre because, yeah. and it's ridiculous because it's it's, it's total rubbish yeah. you know and and as uh, you know i belong as a city i'm doing an online law degree and someone said that if we was doing anything outside that was uh, connected to law we could put it on there so i put mark's case on this and i'm advocating for this man and some of these people come back and said well i've looked online he's a drugs baron and a gang leader and he tried to escape in an helicopter and so it's they're just, just building a bigger picture of a badder person than exactly. he is and it's, it's like a 
Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's total the, rubbish. The problem is with that, people read this stuff and they believe the newspapers. Exactly. So you're getting tired with, you know. Yes. I wanted to be the day on the sun. Exactly, mate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, but it's really detrimental to Mark and it's detrimental yeah. to any avenue we take because yeah, people damaging, it's like, yeah, damaging, it's no it support. You know, and people don't want to sign this petition because they're saying, why do we want to get a drugs get, you know. Yeah. And it, it's false. It's totally, totally false. Even the drugs baron gang leader, is, that wasn't proven in court. Yeah. You know, so I don't know how they're allowed to get away with that. But as I wasn't around 13 years ago, so I would have addressed yeah. it with the papers back then. And probably had we addressed it back then, we might have got more than 13 years down the line. So yeah. now it's just hard to do a lot. It's crazy, isn't it? Mm. Whole, the whole case, it just sounds... It is, terrible, it, is, it? it is, but unfortunately, you know, Mark, that's Mark's life. It's yeah. not just, you know, it's not just a corrupt story, it's a man's life. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. he's lost it, and he's never going to get it back. No. And, he, you know, if, if we can't find a way for him to get out, he's got another 17 years to go. Oh, blimey, poor sir. You oh, know, right. and that's what, it, that's, that's what I'm saying to you, it's heartbreaking. It upsets me sometimes, I talk to him, and he's struggling, and it, it upsets me, because I think, you know, he is a really nice man. Yeah. really caring person and he doesn't deserve it and he is innocent so it's quite heartbreaking yeah I can imagine it yeah. is we had, um, we had Dad Brendan Hyde on who uh, basically suffered the miscarriage of justice he was uh, sentenced for a, uh, a rape charge he didn't do same thing just the word of someone yeah. saying it yeah he did get his overturn though didn't he boy he got overturned but he'd done eight yeah. years three months yeah, yeah that was it so but you still lose eight years and three and months your life, and yeah. pay out, but yeah. that's not the point yeah. is it yeah no I know, I mean, yeah. Mark, because we, we, Mark was saying that cause some people might be wary of letting him out because of the payout. Mark said he'd be willing to sign that away. To, to, yeah. To, just to get out. Yeah, just, just to get yeah, out because he's innocent. You know, yeah. he wants his life back. It, it's not yeah. about money. Yeah. It's about his life. Yeah. You know, he wants to have children. He wants to, he wants to you know, just do live things. a normal life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right. yeah. yeah. And he's just, I mean, now, you know, especially with COVID, they've been locked up for hours. He's had no visiting. You know, I think they're just getting it back now, slightly the visiting. But, you know... Um, and he's, he's had a really hard time in jail at times. What, what cat prisoner is he at the moment? He's, he's a uh, B. B cat. Yes, I, and I don't understand. That's another thing I don't understand. He should be a C because he's not been involved in any violence in the prison. He's not been involved in any racism in the prison. For some reason, they will not lower his, his, his um, thingy because I looked, obviously, I got all the paperwork from the prison, like I just mm. told you. And then they, they refuse him because they say, has he ever been in violence or racism? And there's yes, yes, and yet he never has. Could be the risk of flight thing with the helicopter as well. You never know. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I mean that 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 when he got moved to the other prison after that helicopter story, it, it, they, it says he arrived at the prison. It says reason for uh, prison uh, reason for coming to this prison. They just said transfer. They don't say due well, to escape. Do, do they not think another helicopter can go to that prison as well? That's, that's what I'm saying. To you. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. To you. But as if you know, let's get real here. Mark had thirty pound in the bank, and where's he getting an helicopter oh, yeah, from? Yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's so way out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I mean, I mean, we are talking about the star as well. You know, that, I think that says it all in itself. So I probably should <laughs> say that, but it does. <laughs> you know, but um, as I said, if it come, I've told them that I'll meet with them and show them Mark's paperwork that proves he wasn't involved. But I don't want to put it via an email because it's all Mark's confidential yeah, records. Yeah, children, yeah. But they just seem to be shutting me down. They won't meet me, and they're saying if I don't produce something, they're not going to. Yeah, that's what they do, isn't it? They're just trying to. Yeah. Bury it under the carpet. Yeah. They don't want to get involved. Yeah, um. and it's wrong because I said to you, it's detrimental to Mark, and he's, you know, even the CCRC can look online and see this stuff, and it makes him look bad. Yeah, and you can't tell me they probably don't. Everyone Google's everything, don't they these yeah, days? So you know, but um, I'm just hoping we go forth with this with the CCRC. To me, it raises more well, enough of a question. To, for the safety of his conviction, yeah. so by rights we should be able to at least get referred to the appeal court. Yeah. But whether we will, so it's like a waiting game now, isn't it? Just to uh, yeah. see yeah. what response you get back. Yes, and we're keeping. We, there are some aven other avenues we could go with to and with, but we're going to keep them back. So I don't want to kill all marks, all our hope in one. Yeah, you know, hope's what keeps you going. You lose hope, you've got nothing. So. Yeah. Okay, Julie, thanks for coming. We've wound it up there. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, if you just want to give the uh, your details for yes. the support groups. Yes, okay, so you've got um, Free Mark Osborne Official on Instagram and Facebook, and there will be a website coming shortly, which will be attached to the Free Mark Osborne Official 
uh, Instagram and Facebook that's already running. So that will be available shortly. And there is a petition online. I think it's free Mark William Osborne. If you Google it, it comes up, petition, it will come up. If many people as they can can sign it, helps us get to get the word out there and get, you know, get to the MPs. So. Lovely. Check it out and try and support Thank me. you, Julie. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.